Loaded cornbread. Loaded cornbread. Loaded cornbread. All right. All right, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, don't touch that dial. Today, I will be making a loaded cornbread, which is a recipe from, you guessed it, dessert person. Today, all this in front of me is going to become a delicious, homemade, insanely flavorful cornbread. A little bit of cooking on the stove, making a batter, cooking it, and then sucre from, what's his name again? Gonzo. Gonzo. If you've been here before, you know I'm from the South. I'm from South Carolina. So South is in the name. Thinking about growing up, having cornbread, it got eaten. It's the perfect side dish to a complete meal. I'm sure most of the cornbread I've had in my life has come out of a box. I feel like I need to adjust the camera. Edit this out if you want, but I almost feel like you should just start the whole thing over again. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're new here, please stay. Uh, my name is Virgil, and today I'm going to be making for you guys some fully loaded cornbread from Claire Stavitz's cookbook, Dessert Person. This is one of her more simple recipes in the book, and I wanted to do it to showcase how easy baking can be. For our cornbread today, we will be... <gasps> the cat. Today, our cornmeal will consist of corn, three small ears of corn. The recipe calls for two large ears, so I'm doing this, but I'll weigh it out once I cut the kernels off the cob. Cornmeal, flour, buttermilk, two eggs, baking soda, baking powder, salt, sugar from garbanzo, sour cream, and then the loaded portion of this is gonna be with some scallions, a few slices of bacon. I splurge for the center cut. I hope that makes it much better. Now the recipe does the last ingredient, and this is pretty controversial is a quarter cup of finely chopped fresh cilantro. But mama, I can't do it. It's not for me. I don't like it, I don't want it. It overpowers every bite. If you're a cilantro person, please add the cilantro. But me personally will not be adding the cilantro. Cornbread for me is never like, I gotta have cornbread. But it would be like if we were at the church potluck or the family dinner and there was like a chili without cornbread, that would not happen. Buys a Jiffy Box, what do you even put in that? Milk, water? Do, do you have one? Yeah, there's one in there somewhere. Buttermilk biscuits. Well, that's buttermilk biscuits, that's not Jiffy cornbread. Oh, oh but then I accidentally got this vegetarian one. You know what this is, you know what this is. Jiffy. What do you put in here though? One egg and then a third of a cup of milk. That's all they want you to put into that powder. But look at what we're doing here today. It's gonna be delicious. Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> so first things first, we need to do our preparation. I need to go ahead and take all this shenanigan off of the corn. Pull off the hairs. Growing up, my grandparents had a, a garden, a large garden. Half of it was like rows and rows of corn. And then the other things were like smaller vegetables, peppers, squash, things like that. But once every summer, me and my sister and my cousins would have to go to grandma's house and work the field. We would have to go through, pull the corn off. Then we'd have to sit around and shuck the corn. That is what it's called when you take off the husks. It's an anagram, isn't it? Shuck. Shuck in a husk. Oh, there's an extra C in shuck, I guess. Well, and then break the green beans so they can be preserved, all of that. Your mom's going to a psychiatrist. She's gonna tell Bart to leave me. It'll break up the family and you'll have to live with your grandmother and pick beans. Dad, I like picking beans with grandma. And it would be like a long day of work. And by that it was like a few hours. Get the kids out there. She's like, guys, how they fed this. That's why it's like a group of them. Yeah, you know, it's the country. Yeah. Pickens. So now we're just with a smaller bowl turned into a larger bowl. Wait, how? With a smaller bowl, put inside of a larger bowl upside down. This is the safest way to remove the kernels from your corn. Go down the corn. And then you wanna take the back of your knife and you wanna scrape out those delicious juices that are hiding inside. And this also helps get off the little bits of the kernels that may have been missed by the knife. Gotta get those corn juices. And that is really the the benefit of doing your own corn. But the recipe says you can use frozen corn, so if that's your gig, then do it. And this does make a mess, 
So prepare for that. But yeah, and it's all over the table. Ah! Everything's fine. All right, now that that's that. So we're looking for two cups or 284 grams of corn. Tear my bowl. All right, well, there's a little left. Should I just put it all in? Yeah. I'm gonna put it all in. If it all goes wrong, okay. Well, now I'm gonna slice up some bacon. So it says two or three slices. Let's go with three if we wanna load it up. Bacon companies need to come up with a better way. If any of you out there work for the bacon industry, pass that note along. I'm gonna coarsely chop. And now we're just gonna chop up our scallions. I'm not gonna go too far down into the whites. Should be good. My jalapeno. So we're gonna lose the top, cut it in half, and then de-seed and remove the white middle. You could use a spoon. Hilarious. So I'm just gonna throw this in with my bowl of scallions because it all will go in at the same time. So I have my cast iron skillet. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this onto medium. Then five tablespoons of butter to begin melting. It seems like a lot, but following the recipe, here we go. We're looking for this butter to get foamy. Then we will add in our bacon to brown. Starting to see a little foam here. I mean, it's foaming. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my bacon. This will be a few minutes to get the fat rendered and get the bacon nice and crispy. I just soak my bacon in butter. So now that the bacon is crisp, we're gonna go ahead and add the aromatics and the corn. Make sure you get all those good juices. Check it out, yes, give it a little stir, yes. All right, so I think we're at a good place here, so I'm gonna go ahead and kill the heat, move the pan off the stove to cool. So now we're gonna go ahead and mix together all of our dry ingredients first in a large bowl. So here I have one cup of all-purpose flour, half of a cup of our yellow cornmeal, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, half of a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, and then we're gonna do one and a half tablespoons of diamond crystal. You know the gig, one quarter teaspoon of ground cayenne. And now we're gonna whisk those together. Get them nice and evenly distributed. That looks good, now I'll set this aside. So now we're gonna go ahead and mix our wet ingredients for the cornbread, so two large eggs. And we're gonna whisk these until no streaks remain. Not too streaky. And then we're gonna whisk, whisk in the rest of our dry ingredients. Uh, a cup of sour cream, this is Faye, and this is eight ounces, so this is a cup. I don't have to measure it. Oh, take the paper, remove the paper. Half a cup of buttermilk. This is uh, New York local buttermilk. Again, the closer to you that everything comes from, all of your ingredients, the better it will be. This is a tablespoon and a half of granulated sugar. At this point, if you wanted to add the cilantro, this is where you would do it. But again, we're not doing that. I don't feel like my baby whisk is the one for the job anymore. And I guess the sour cream was supposed to be different. Oops, the sour cream and the egg should be at room temperature. Mine weren't, but it's coming together next. It's coming together. <clears throat> so now with our dry ingredients, we're just gonna make a well in the center. We're going to dump our wet ingredients into the center of the <laughs> so much for the well. And then on top of this mixture, we will add our corn mixture from this stove top. And the cookbook does say that it's fine if it's a bit warm. And it is. I'm just enjoying a little chicken on a stock. My well has kind of disappeared, but it says starting in the center, so I'm just gonna sort of mix it up, beginning in the center, and incorporating the dry as I turn. And it says to mix until it's evenly. I don't wanna overdo it, so I guess I'll stop here. Now we're back at the stovetop. 
we're gonna heat an eye up to medium high. So they say. All right, now let's heat up for a minute. We'll add our two, our last two tablespoons of butter and we're swirling to coat the pan. And once the butter has dissolved completely, we will pour in our batter. Nice and warm, looking good, looking good. Grab the batter, kill this heat. Now just smooth the top and we're gonna go into 475 degree up, 425. 425. And we can come over here and look at my sleepy kitty. Hello. We're gonna bake this in the oven on 425 for 20 to 25 minutes. We're gonna bake it until the top is puffed, golden brown, and cracking. It's cracking. So I have let my cornbread go the full 25 just to get a little color. This timer is about to go off. But, uh, there it did. Ooh la. So it doesn't look quite as brown on top as uh, the photograph in the book. It looks a little more browner on the top and the bottom. But overall, I like the look of it and I really like the smell of it. Now the recipe says that it needs to cool completely on a wire rack. And I know it's tempting to dig into some warm cornbread, but it's important that it cools all the way so that way the crumb and the texture remains the way it's intended. I'm gonna sit this in a cool place on a wire rack and I'll see you guys in a little while. Okay, so now that the cornbread has completely cooled, I'm just going to use my offset spatula to run it around the rim, make sure there's no sticky bits. And then I'm just gonna flip it out on my hand. Lay it down. Looks pretty good. I mean, I'll eat it. <laughs> More to share. Now I'm gonna cut myself a slice, pop it in my 350 oven. We're gonna give it a taste. Pull away. We've got some air pockets in there too. Looks pretty good. I'll pop this in there for a few minutes and then we'll come back and taste it. My sleece. That's how we say slice in Brooklyn. All right, I mean, what else is there to do but put it in your mouth, you know what I'm saying? Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. We'll get a little bit of our booter. As a reference, this is what the looked like in the book. And then this is what has happened for me. Obviously a little less brown on the top in the, and then the thickness of brownness on the bottom as well. But the texture looks nice. It still looks a little bit moist, but still pretty crumbly. Let's put some butter on it and eat it. Oh yeah. Uh, maybe too much. <laughs> just, maybe I should have let the butter soften a little bit more, but you know what? Look, I'm just gonna butter the whole thing. Butter here, butter there. All right, stop pussyfooting around. <laughs> oh, mercy. Okay, all right, that's good. Could use a little more salt. I think you could remedy that with some salted butter. But I definitely don't have a problem with this. It's pretty good. More butter. Oh, you know what? Let me get my salt. You can see this is my diamond. It's a diamond and then a crystal. Kosher salt. See what I did there? I said, they want me to write that out? No. Mm-hmm. Yup, yup, it's really good. Like I said, the reason I wanted to do this one on the channel was because it is relatively easy, not too much work to get from start to finish. I think the hardest part was having to wait for it to cool down completely to eat it. Definitely worth it. Follow the directions, do what you're told, wear a mask. Yeah, I make this. Why the hell not? You're making soup, gumbo, chili. Impress people instead of just making a box of Jiffy. You got this. Whew. If you like this video, like and subscribe down below. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for what you'd like me to cook next. Let me know, do it all. Until we meet again, goodbye.